Hey everyone, welcome back to the Basement Bait Shop. Thanks for tuning in for another episode. A lot of you guys are aware of the fact that I had a corporate job in downtown Chicago, grew up in Chicago, and moved to Wisconsin in 2014. So I spent uh, most of my life in Chicago. Chicago's not that super friendly when it comes to fishing in the metro area. There are a decent number of bodies of water that you can fish. Most of it is shoreline related fishing, which is perfectly fine. The issue is it takes you forever to get there. And what I mean by that is, so when I grew up, I, I grew up on the north side of Chicago, kind of in the Wrigley Field area. So if I went to work, I would jump on the Metra, the Blue Line, or I would take a, bu you know, a bus Blue Line combination type thing. And I would, it would take me an hour to an hour and a half, no matter what piece of public transportation I took. So if I got done at work at five o'clock, took the train home, got home, it would be 6.30. By the time then I turned around and was able to get to the lakefront, which was really where the best fishing was and what interested me the most, I wouldn't be there until 7.30ish. And at that point, unless it was the summer, it was really hard to get out and be able to spend more than an hour of fishing. So it was a lot of work and effort to be able to try to fish for an hour. But the lakefront is really what had my interest because I was very, very interested in trying to catch the Illinois state record smallmouth, which at the time was like six and a quarter pounds. It's really not much more than that, but it's getting broken every couple of years, it seems like now. Very, very, it'll, it'll be seven or eight pounds here in the near future. I mean, the, the Lake Michigan, the Chicago lakefront of Lake Michigan is getting much better. The fish in the Great Lakes just seem to continue to get bigger. So I have no doubt it will be broken. But what I ended up being was that guy who would be riding the blue line or riding the Metro train downtown with a fishing rod in tow. So when I got done with work, I would head over to the downtown Chicago lakefront and fish any of the various harbors or work my way up to like Montrose or Belmont Harbor, those, those areas. But I was always walking around with the rod. I'd take it to work because if I went from work to the lakefront, I would be able to get three hours of fishing and I would cut out all that tra lost travel time. Well, while I was doing it, there was a small group of anglers that you know, you'd hear about were catching big fish and posting big fish and they had the secret bait. Well, I finally got my hands on some. I mean, this is, I got them 10, 12 years ago at this point. And it's called the Tight Rope Firecracker Jig. It's, it's this little, these little guys. They are ultra fin finesse, high-end jigs that are just a special little bait because they're very, very unique. Now I know, you know, a lot of you guys know that I'm sponsored by Dirty Jigs and Dirty Jigs doesn't make anything like this. I wish they did, but this is such a cool little jig that I just felt like I had to share it with you. And I've got a lot of history with this jig, but it is a total dominating bait in Great Lakes smallmouth fishing. And it's pretty much the only jig you should be throwing if you're using a jig. But here's the key to it. This is why it's such a popular jig, especially down in the Chicago area, not just because it's from that area and it was developed by a bunch of guys down there, like Ryan Whitaker, who's a buddy of mine. It was the fact that the way the bait is tied, so it's very tightly tied around the collar, hand tied on a high end jig. I'm not sure the hook they use, but it's laser sharp, nice wire weed guard. It's always a ball head jig and there's reasons for this. But the reason it's so tightly tied and the, the uh, skirt material is cut so short is because when it sits on the bottom, the skirt material will literally hold the bait up from falling all the way down. Well, what that does, especially for a shore angler who's fishing, say, the Chicago lakefront, which is almost all uh, sea walls or giant boulders that have stacked together to create like break walls, what it does is it becomes very, very snag resistant because the skirt material literally prevents it from getting deep down inside of the cracks of the rocks. It's a very, very key thing here. Because if you, you know, as you guys know, that bank fish, you're bringing your bait uphill at that point, which is a very good way to catch fish, but it also means you're probably going to get snagged more and it's harder to get the snags out because you're pulling the bait into the snag. 
But in this case, because the bait's got a weed guard and it's got all the skirt material working as a weed resistant factor or rock resistant factor, the bait was very, very snag resistant. And that's one of the absolute key reasons as to why it's so successful in rocky areas with smallmouth. I mean, smallmouth love to eat the thing, but you know, if I grab a handful of them here and shake them up, what you'll see happens is all of the hooks ride up to the top. I mean, you grab them, you toss them around, and that's what, what, what literally happens is the hooks pop up to the top because of two things. That skirt material is tied so tightly that it wants to push it up, but that's where the ball head comes in. The ball head, when the skirt material pushes it, the ball head will rotate back up to the standing position. So it's always in a perfect position when you're fishing it. And, in, you know, it's also at the same time pretty snag resistant, which is what makes it so great. The other key period or time when I love to use these, if I'm not, say, targeting smallmouth in rocky areas, is down south for largemouth. Well, not just down south, but all over for largemouth. If you've got areas that get some of that black slime or little LJ slime type stuff where no matter what bait it is, if you bring it across the bottom, you end up getting like some caught around the line tie or around the, the, the bullet weight if you're throwing a Texas rig. Like every cast you get some. So it makes it really hard to throw a bottom bait. This little firecracker jig is so awesome because it literally walks across that slime. You will bring this in clean when you can bring in no other bait, which is ridiculous to me because it's a jig and it's on the bottom. But it's almost like the, the strands of rubber are just keeping it off the bottom. And it just walks right over that slime. So if you have places where you get that black slime or that green LJ type slime, and it's really hard to fish a bottom bait or let a bait touch the bottom because it will always get it. You got to get one of these little jigs. You know, they're made they're made by Tightrope. I don't know if I mentioned that. It's tightrope.com. It's the Tightrope Firecracker jig. Uh super good bait, hand tied. They used to be really tough to get cuz it was just based on when Ryan and his buddies would tie them up and they weren't always available. Uh but I think they've since uh, paired up with another company. So I think they've always got them on the website or at least always have a good portion of them. And I don't, so I don't just fish it like this. I do use a trailer. There's two types of trailers that I really like. One is what I consider more of a bait fish look. And the two trailers that I really like for that are the Berkeley Maxent Flatworm or if I have them here, I thought I had them here, the Erie Darter Jr. And in both cases, I end up ripping off, I, I make the bait, I, I cut the top part of the bait off so that it's about two inches long. So in this case, I've rigged one with the Erie Darter Jr. And that's what it looks like. You can see in my hand, it's a very, very small jig, just super finesse. But what, what you don't want is a trailer that will overpower the characteristics that make the jig so good. What I mean by that is you want a trailer that will allow the bait to still stand upright when you're fishing it. You don't want a trailer that's so heavy that it'll pull the bait down so it's laying flat like that. You want a light trailer that when in the water will still be sitting upright. It's definitely one of the biggest keys with this and that's why small trailers are really big and that's why I cut some of the trailer off because I don't want it to be big. I want it to match the jig in itself. So that's one. The other type of trailer I like are really finesse cross style baits. And I've got two that I really like. This is the Little Trooper, Maxent Little Trooper by Berkeley, and then the three inch uh, Biwa Armored Craw. And I've got one here rigged up with the Little Trooper so that you guys can see it. So there's the Little Trooper, just matches the jig perfectly. So when you're holding it, you know, again, it's not going to overpower it when it's in the water. It's still going to stand upright in the fighting position. Just super key. The other thing I want to point out is when you do put the trailer on the jig, you don't want to pull it up so that it holds some of the strands. Like sometimes you, you slide a trailer up and it'll like pull strands of your jig and put it in a different direction. You want to make sure you pull all those strands out so that they can continue to be in that, what I call that fighting position. They're so short, they're just sticking straight out. 
because that's so critical for that bait. Really, really key little bait. I'm telling you guys, it's it's it was a secret for years on the Chicago lakefront. It has since expanded to the you know to be a a jig that is still very very uh, unknown. But the guys that do know about it aren't telling anybody because it's such a killer little jig. It catches tons of largemouth. I had one year fishing uh, Lake Cumberland where I caught most of my weight in the tournament on that. You know, I think I had, uh, I don't know, I finished in the 30s and I caught it, half the bass on. I was just working bluff walls, walking that down. It's the same thing I would have been doing on the Chicago Lakefront. But it's a killer tactic like Milox. I've had some giant smallmouth I've caught on it uh absolutely great jig check it out tightrope.com letting it out of the bag super killer little jig guys if you enjoyed the video hit that like button share it on social media stay tuned for tomorrow's video it's another good one